In section 6.1, we will talk about the empirical rule and normal distributions. First off, the probability of an event is determined by the area under the curve. What does that mean? Let's say we have a curve that has a mean mu. The probability that x is greater than or equal to c, so probability that a value is greater than or equal to a value c, is the area under the curve is given by the area under the curve. So if this is your value c, then the probability that x is greater than or equal to c is the area under the curve. Okay, so the probability that a value x is greater than or equal to this value c is going to be the, prob the area under the curve. The probability that x is less than or equal to c, so once again, this is your mean mu, and this is your value c, the probability that a value x is less than or equal to c is going to be the area under the curve. This time we're going to shade to the left because this is less than or equal to. In the first case, we shade it to the right of c because we want the values that are greater than or equal to c. In the second case, we shade to the left of c because we want the probability that a value x is less than or equal to c. Probability that a value x is between b and c. If this is your mu, if this is b, if this is c, then the probability that a value x lies between these two numbers, b and c, is going to be shaded in between b and c. So this is the area under the curve. This is the probability that a value x is between b and c. The normal distribution. A continuous random variable is normally distributed if it has a normal probability distribution. What does that mean? That means that, that the histogram of the ra random variable has shape of a normal curve, which means it's bell-shaped and symmetric. The mean determines where the graph is centered, and the standard deviation determines the spread. So what does that mean? If this is your mean, then your standard deviation is set such that 68% of the values fall within one standard deviation of your mean. So in our data set, we calculate the mean, and the standard deviation will tell us that 68% of the values are going to be within one standard deviation. 95% of the values are within two standard deviations. So if this is your mean, and you go two standard deviations to the right and two standard deviations to the left, then 95% or most of the values are going to fall within two standard deviations. Okay, so 95% of the values are going to fall within two standard deviations of the mean. 99.7%, so almost all the values, are going to fall between three standard deviations of the mean. So if you look at these values, 99.7% or almost all the values are going to fall within three standard deviations of the mean. If you think about height, the height of a, a male in the United States is approximately 5 feet 10 inches. Somebody who's 7 foot 6 inches tall, it does not fall within this 99.7% range. So they're going to be more than 3 standard deviations from the mean. So the, the values that are more than three standard deviations from the mean either way are the extreme outliers, like somebody who's seven foot six inches. Okay, area under a normal curve. Suppose that a random variable x is normally distributed with mean mu and standard deviation sigma. The area under the normal curve for any interval uh, is, represents a probability that the randomly selected individual from the population will have the characteristic determined described by the, by the interval of values. So that's kind of what we talked about before. That probability is in terms of area under the density curve. Here's an example. The golf scores for a school team were normally distributed with a mean score of 68, so our mean score is 68, and a standard deviation of 2. So if the standard deviation is 2, that means one standard deviation will give us 70, two standard deviations will give us 72, and three standard deviations will give us 74. Going the other way, one standard deviation, which is 2, 68 minus 2 is 66. Another standard deviation would be 64. Another standard deviation would be 62. So here's what 
the normal distribution tells us, 68% of the values fall within one standard deviation. 95% of the values fall within two standard deviations, and 99.7% of the values fall between three standard deviations. Okay, so let's find the probability that a golfer scored between 66 and 70. So let's take let's take the mean, which is 68, and go one standard deviation either way. If we go one standard deviation either way, then the empirical rule tells us that about 68% of the values will be within one standard deviation of the mean, which is 68. Now, how do we know how much to go to get to the next uh, value? Well, each standard deviation is 2, so 68 plus 2 is 70. 68 minus 2 is 66. So this represents one standard deviation, which is 2 units. This represents one standard deviation, which is 2 units. So the probability that a golfer scored between 66 and 70, though these numbers are within one standard deviation of the mean, so the probability will be 68% or 0.68. Between what two scores does a team score 95% of the time? Now, if you look at our empirical rule, 95% of, uh, of the values are within two standard deviations. So if 68 is our mean, then two standard deviations represent the numbers 72 and 64. So this will tell us that 95% of the values, the shaded area, are going to fall between two standard deviations of the mean. That's going to be 64 and 72. So between what score does a team score 95% of the time? Between 64 and 72. So 95% of the time, the team scores between 64 and 72. I don't watch golf, so I have no idea what that means, but hopefully you guys do. Okay, here's a continuation of that same problem. Um, so let me just write this out again since it's a new slide. We got 68 and each standard deviation is 2, so this will give us 70, 72, 74. This is 66, 64, and 62. What percentage of scores would be between 68 and 70? So let's think about this. If one standard deviation gives us 68% of the values, then between 68 and 70, just this part, is half of 68%. So half of 68% would be 34% or 0.34. Let's do another one. Find the probability that a golfer scores between 64 and 68. So let me erase this real quick. Okay, now here's what we know. 64, this is two standard deviations away from 68. So I'm going to go two standard deviations each way. And this represents 95% of the value since we went two standard deviations away from 68, which is the mean. Now, we don't want all the values between 64 and 72. That would be 95%. We just want the values between 64 and 68. So between 64 and 68, this is half of 95% because that's half, those are half the values between 64 and 72. So if you take 95% and you uh, divide that by 2, then this will give you 47.5%. Okay, so what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to try letters E, F, and G by yourself. And we will uh, we'll go over this in class. To summarize the empirical rule, 68% of the values fall within one standard deviation of the mean, which is given by mu plus or minus sigma, which means mu plus sigma and mu minus sigma. That's one standard deviations. 95% of the values fall within two standard deviations. So within two standard deviations, you have mu plus two sigma and mu minus two sigma. 99% of the values fall within three standard deviations. So three standard deviations, that's going to be mu plus three sigma and mu minus three sigma. And that's, of course, three times sigma, three times sigma.
Suppose an adult male shoe size is normally distributed with a mean of 11 inches and a standard deviation of 1.5 inches. Use the empirical rule to answer the following. So first, whenever you're dealing with the empirical rule, you're given a mean and a standard deviation. It always helps to draw a visual model. So the mean is 11 inches and the standard deviation is 1.5. So if you go uh, one standard deviation, each standard deviation is 1.5. So 11 plus 1.5, this will give you 12.5. You go another standard deviation, 12.5 plus 1.5, this will give you 14. Another standard deviation, 14 plus 1.5, this will give you 15.5. Going the other way, if you take one standard deviation away from 11 the other way, that's 11 minus 1.5, because one standard deviation, that's equal to 1.5. So 11 minus 1.5, this will give you 9.5. You go two standard deviations, 9.5 minus 1.5, this will give you 8. Another standard deviation, that will give you 6.5. 68% of adult male shoe sizes are between. Now, when you have this model, the uh, the problem becomes a pretty easy problem. We know that 68% of values fall within one standard deviation. So one standard deviation to the right is 12.5, and one standard deviation to the left is 9.5. What percent of adult males have a shoe size between 6.5 and 15.5 inches? So 6.5, that's one, two, three standard deviations away from the mean. 15.5, that's one, two, three standard deviations away from the mean. The empirical rule tells us that 99.7% of the values are going to fall within three standard deviations of the mean. So 99.7% of the values are going to fall within three standard deviations, which is between 6.5 and 15.5. Now let's recall that a z-score is given by the formula z equals to x minus mu divided by sigma. And when you convert all the data values to a z-score, then this gives us a standard normal distribution. So all the values are standardized regardless of what the mean and the standard deviation are. So the z-score tells us how many standard deviations away from the mean a data value is. Okay, so once again, a z-score is how many standard deviations away from the mean a value is. Here's an example. Same thing, uh, we have a mean of 11 inches and a standard deviation of 1.5. If an adult male has a shoe size of 13.5, what is a z-score for this raw score? So the z-score is the data value, which is 13.5, minus the mu, which is the mean, that's 11, divided by the standard deviation, which is 1.5. If you take 13.5 minus 11, this will give you 2.5 divided by 1.5. And if you take 2.5, divide, divide that by 1.5 uh, on your calculator, then we will get the z-score, which I unfortunately haven't calculated. This will give us 1.67. And the z-score, you always round to two decimals. Okay, so try the rest of the problems by yourselves, and we will go over them in class.